Hey guys, it's Fester bringing you a first in what should be a series of tutorials or guides on how to use programs such as After Effects, Sony Vegas, Cinema 4D and Photoshop. So this first one I'm going to be doing After Effects and I'm going to show you how to do the cinematic wobble or shake and how to do a basic scope in transition where the scope comes in from one of the sides, could be a top, bottom, left or right and rotates as it's coming in. So first of all, I'm going to do cinematic. I'm going to go find my cinematics folder, which is on my desktop. That one, and find COP4 cinematics. I'm be doing. Um, I'll do. Because I've been doing a bit of COP4 editing recently, so I'm going to import that. Control I if you didn't know how, or go File Import, um, and then we're going to drag it down here to the new composition. And if you have a cinematic, it should be in 59.97. But for cinematics, you're not really doing much editing on it. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'm just going to split this layer. Um, I normally use the... Uh, what do you call it? I don't even know what it is. There we go. I normally use a shortcut, but I can't use it because I'm using Camtasia at the minute. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drag the edges of this out. So I'm just going to... If you hold shift, it will maintain the aspect ratio. Just drag the edges of that out. Yeah, loses a tiny bit of the quality but it's not too much of an issue. Just put that to half. There we go. And what I'll do is I will click here I'm going to press P to bring up the position. I'm going to press Alt which will make it, it'll say refresh disabled and it'll come up with this blue writing and a little box. In the box I'm going to put wiggle W-I-G-G-L-E open brackets 3 and no not that, 3 and 20. Um, the first number which I've put 3 is the amount of wiggle so sort of the velocity of it, and the second number is the speed of it. It's probably not the very best words to use, but one of them determines how much it shakes, and the second one's how many shakes it does in a minute. So those are the settings I use, just because otherwise it shakes loads, and I don't like that. So it's just a little relaxed shake. So here I'll just go do a quick round preview, which is going to take forever on my computer. There we go, as you can see it wobbles a little bit. It's not very smooth, but that's because it keeps cutting out, because I'm trying to, um, yeah, record. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add a new adjustment layer, and I'm going to add some colour correction. You don't have to worry about this, but I'm going to use my, what I used in my one clip edit. So it looks I made up myself don't have to but I'm just going to use it for now and I'm going to go layer new solid or control and Y for a new solid make sure the colour is black and again scale it out a bit there we go and I'm going to go up here where the circle is it'll probably be a rectangle view and get the mask and I'm going to drag a mask around there like that as you'll notice the outside there will go the colour and you'll have a nice big black bit so I'm going to click inverted here and it'll give you a sort of nice sort of uh what do you want to call it? To give you two black bars which make it look more like a cinematic. So yeah, that's the first bit of the tutorial. I'll render that out and I'll stick it at the end. Alright, I'm gonna import two more clips, which are on my desktop. No they're not. I need to find them. Uh where are they? They're in that one. I'm gonna get these two clips, just because I know what these clips are roughly. And I'm going to drag these into a new composition. Um, right, I'm going to edit the composition settings. And I'm going to change the length to 30 seconds. And I just noticed something else. That's on 60 on at 59.94. Right, I'm going to drag. There's two clips. There's one which he gets a quad feed with a grenade. Uh, somewhere. There we go. And the second one he gets another quad feed, they're both on the same map. But with the second clip, I'm going to drag it across, and I'm going to find the place where he scopes him. Which seems to be there. I'll just try and find it a bit more exact. Uh, ch -ch -ch. So I'd normally be able to do this a lot quicker, but it's taking longer to render. And I'll just stick it on third. I just find 
place that I want. There we go, that'll do. Right, I'm going to duplicate the layer, Control and D, and now I'm going to go Layer, Time, and Freeze Frame. What this will do is it will create a freeze frame, so this whole layer at the top is exactly the same. So the layer won't move at all, so you won't be able to see anything. And on this layer, I'm not going to do anything yet, I'm going to duplicate it again. So press Control and D to duplicate. And on this top layer, I'm going to add a new mask. I'm going to go for the ellipse tool. I'm going to draw a circle around here. It doesn't have to be precise just yet. And I'm going to zoom in. And if you double click, press V, which will bring back up your um, select tool. And then double click on one of the points, and it'll bring out this little box, which you can adjust to it better. So I'm going to adjust this around the edge of the scope. Try and make it fairly precise, but it doesn't have to be a hundred percent. Oops. Ah, uh, there we go. That'll do. If you click that one there, it gets rid of the mask. And if you disable the layers below it, apart from the bottom one, you'll be able to see that. So yeah, that looks okay. It's a bit rough. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna go into mask, and we're going to get the expansion and drag that up to twenty-five. And then on the feather, I'm gonna put that to thirty, which, as it will do, it adds a nice little blur around the edge of the scope, which looks quite nice. Alright, so I'm going to decide this is where I want the scope to be. Uh, so I'm going to press P, which brings up the position again. I'm going to drag it back, not too far, say there. And I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to drag it across to the side so it's off the screen. There we go. Oh, a little bit further. You have to make sure you click on it and then press Alt, or it won't let you click. Which gets really annoying when you don't know what you're doing. And then I'm going to go to Rotation, and I'm going to keyframe that. And I'm going to go back to find the same keyframe as my position, which is there. Go back to rotation and add that to 1, which is one full rotation of 360 degrees. I'm just going to pause this for 2 seconds, because I have a phone call from my mother. Alright, there we go. I'm sorry about that, but my mother just called me, as I need to get my little sister from nursery. Anyway, where are we? Um, yeah, we've added a rotation of 360 degrees. So I'll get a quick preview. How long this thing takes a preview is really annoying. Which is why I need to save up money for a new computer. Which is why I may start charging for graphics and edits and stuff. Not because I want to, but because I need the money. And if we watch our back, look, it rolls in from the side. That speed should be okay. Right, I'm going to trim this down, because otherwise, go away, um, otherwise, the, what do you want to call it, otherwise it will just stay there afterwards, and I'm going to make, go back onto layer 2, and I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to add a new mask, I'm going to make it, say, that big, Again, this isn't very precise, whereas yours could be a lot better than this. And I'm going to stick that to inverted. Now, again, oh, it's gone mask. Again, that's got a big gap around the side, so I'm going to do the expansion. This time I'm going to go minus, say, 40. Oh, no, maybe a bit more. Minus 75. There we go, and that's got that back to the middle. So what I'm going to do is if I go here, I'll go just before that keyframe at the top with the rotation and I'm going to keyframe that and then as I get down to there no I'm not, I've done that wrong ignore that I'm going to go in line with that one and I'm going to keyframe to minus 75 and I'm going to go just before this one and I'm going to stick that up to 300 where's that? oh no, it's still got edges so I'm going to do 350 and as you notice this black circle's just gone from the outside get rid of that and I'll stick the feather up to 25 so now what I should do is it'll bring that scope in like that which is what we want however we don't want it exactly like that because that's not 
completely how we want it. So I'm going to go for the opacity and I'm going to put it about there and I'm going to stick that to zero. Keyframe it there. Go to the end and I'll stick it to about 80. I'm going to turn this layer back on and trim that to the beginning of the other two layers so that when that's continued it will go on to this clip and because you haven't moved this clip at all it should be ok all I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a quick adjustment layer so I can add the um, what do I want? looks again which you won't have to worry about and then I shall render it out and I'll show you quickly how to render out on here uh, I'll use the same one, I'll, I'll just use that one, that'll do That doesn't look very nice, but oh well, I can't be bothered to change it. I can't be bothered. So I will, because you notice here, because I changed the length of it, it's stupidly long, so I'm going to change that, drag that down to there, and I'm going to go up, position, trinkle up to work area, which will drag this across, and it'll make it 17 seconds long, or whatever it is, which is about right. And I'm going to go up, composition, add to render queue. I'll go down here. Now what most people use is you can use AVI which is the default one which is good quality but it gives you a huge file of like a gigabyte for say a 20 second clip if that. Um, what I use is H.264 and then we're going to format options stick them both on free or you can have them on 25 and then hit OK. You don't normally need to worry about audio output unless you're doing your audio in Vega um, unless you're doing your audio in After Effects so hit OK and then this one here you can choose the location so I just put this as tutorial if I can spell and then dot mp4 and then you click here where it says render now a quick tip when you're rendering is press caps lock and it will freeze this so when you're rendering it'll be slightly quicker so you don't have to worry about actually uh, rendering the frames as well so your computer just keeps it as a blank frame um, I'm going to render these both out and I'm going to sit them together at the end so you can see what it looks like and you can sort of compare yours to mine if you need to. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you want anything else, just comment below what you want it to be. And if you liked it or if it helped you, give it a like, whatever. So yeah, cheers in a bit, guys.